Shooting images of deep space from light polluted city skies. The sad truth for many astrophotographers out there. A solution for the problem could be narrowband filters. And the best solution for color cameras, DSLR or dedicated camera are multi-narrowband filters. These filters are focused on hydrogen and oxygen and allow shooting many deep sky targets from light polluted city backyards. Getting the maximum out of that data is quite hard, but creating an HOL palette is definitely the best solution for nebula targets. Today I want to show you how to edit an HOO image. In my case I'm using the IDAS Nebula Booster Filter, which is a multi-narrowband filter of course, and I think it's comparable to the Optolong L Enhance filter. And with these filters you can of course edit this image like a basic RGB image, but there's one problem. The green channel is basically non-existent and will add a lot of noise to the image. And today I'm gonna use AstroPixel Processor, Photoshop and PixInsight, the whole load of software, to edit an HOO palette image. And we start, as you can see, in APP, because we want to stack this image, but not quite as you might think. I will start by adding our frames. Let's just... I don't have multi-channels or multi-sessions th sessions this time. I'm gonna call this NAC, the North American Cross. I've imaged the North America Nebula. I'm gonna call it HA. And let's just load the light frames in and take a look at those. Are these the correct files? HO tutorial, yes they are. I have 47 light frames here, let's take a look. Well, as you can see, you can't see much. Neutralize the background, maybe a bit more now. Well, that's a single sub with this filter. It's okay, I'd say, from my city skies. And it's a 3 minute exposure at minus 15, as I, I think so, yes. Alright, we want to stack this image, but with the power of APP, we can actually split these images into an HA and an O3 separate image, which is insane. I will load all the other frames, the flat frames, dark frames, I don't have dark flats for this, but let's go for the bias. And before we do anything further, we go into raw fits, we choose RGGB, force the color frame array, and most important, the algorithm. We're gonna scroll all the way down and choose HA03 extract HA. It won't just separate the red channel, it will go through a very complicated algorithm I suppose, I suppose, I don't know, to extract most of the HA signal from this image. Now everything is fine, we want to calibrate everything in automatic, it works fine, I want my bad pixel map. Analyze the stars is automatic, registering works as well. Normalizing is great, now let's go for integration choose the best 97% and also go for automatic because APP knows that pretty well by now. And stacking this with local normalization rejection would be way too overkill right now for only for only 45 images. And as soon as I hit integrate it will go through the process and will have a monochrome HA image at the end out of an RGB image from a color camera which is great. So let's go. And the HA image is ready in just a few seconds. Well, this is way too overkill. Let's go for the standard 15. This looks like a proper HA image. Now, of course, this isn't as good as a monochrome HA image, of course. A monochrome image would have more detail and less noise. Generally the HA image has the most detail and because of that the least noise, but I think this result for a color camera is great as well. Now before we do anything I will save this image stretched as a TIFF. TIFF for Photoshop to work with and 32 bits. Saved. And we, of course, want to have these images aligned when we create our HOO image. And that is why, without altering any information or data, let's say, 
I will go for extract 03. I will need to renormalize, of course. I'm sorry. If I now do this again, the registering is already there. So these images, the O3 layer and the HA layer, will be aligned and we don't need to register them again in Pixinside. That's why I will hit integrate again after changing from HA to O3. And let's look at the O3 image. Call this O3. And let's go. And the O3 image is done. It looks maybe a lot like the HA image, but it's way it's way less data, of course. O3 is generally not that strong in nebula targets. It, it of course depends on the target. If you go for a supernova remnant, of course, there's more O3 in there. But let's compare to the HA. We see that the images are still aligned, and there's of course way more data for the HA. That is why I will now save this again as a TIFF, 32 bits. And that's everything we need to do in APP. Now I'm in Photoshop because I want to try some new methods that I've learned off Instagram, and especially from the channel of AstroAd. Thank you, Thomas, because he used a different technique for noise reduction and I really liked it. It made the nebula look amazing. And I will do that as well. So I will open these other two images just out of APP. I will call them accordingly. This is the O3 image. And this is HA, as you can see. I will copy O3 over there. And do 3. And do the first crop. And of course crop both of them so that they are still aligned. Now let's see adjustment right now, not yet. We will convert this image into 16-bit, don't merge them. And do, no, not the curves. Do a levels adjustment, as you can see, and APP stretches these images so that I can choose 42. So now we are at the black point, at the clipping black point, and same for the HA. Levels. Here we are. Now both images are still aligned, and they are at the same level, literally. And now the quite unorthodox way, which I really enjoyed lately, editing these nebula images, I will go to camera raw filter. I'm on the O3 layer right now. And yeah, it's not that big of a deal. I literally just pull the noise reduction up to 100%. And you think it would be a total nightmare, but it actually isn't. Let's take a look. Let's zoom in. How can I zoom ah, over here? You can see maybe the nebula structures where there is a lot of data aren't really hurt that bad. And now if I pull it up again, they are still there. The noise within the dark areas kind of transforms into a different shape. Can I zoom in more? You can see the noise over here without reduction. Now, just basic noise. And now it turns into kind of filament shape, maybe like I kind of compare it to ice on the windshield. But this isn't actually that bad. We can minimize this noise even more in Pixinsight. And this is a pretty good image in my, in, in my opinion. So let's apply this and again apply it to HA. This might be, no, this might be a quite unorthodox way, but I really enjoy it because the, the noise reduction in Photoshop is quite strong and quite good, of course. Camera raw filter, add noise reduction, da 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 da. Okay. We of course have to work in the with the noise in the darker areas, but that's no problem in Pixinside. I will save this now, save as, not in this folder, SSD. 
tutorial. That's the previous file name I chose for my first run of this, my second run for this image, not the tutorial. Um, how do I call it? NSC. This is the O3 layer. O3 stretched and pH for Photoshop. No compression, I know. And same for HA. Save as the same, but with the HA name. Save. And now we will move on to Pixinside. The first thing I'm going to do is to load both of these images. Projects, nope. HO tutorial, we have these two. HA and O3. Now we could of course do noise reduction on each layer, but that's not really the best choice because this would imply more color noise if we combine them, so let's combine them first. I will combine the, these images just plainly HOO. I will go for pixel math, uncheck single RGB expression, go for the editor, here we can choose the channels, the red or black will be HA, green O3, blue O3, HOO. Click OK, create a new image in RGB color. Now hit the square and there's our image and it looks way better already than just the basic RGB processing which is amazing. And now we can progress the basic editing with this image. I think I will just maybe load. Let's go through some steps I've taken to get the final image which I will load right now. Where is it? Nebulae. Reprocess. This is the final image and look at this difference. So the basic steps I've taken, can we scale this down? Well, let's put this over here. The steps I've taken, you can of course see many contrast enhancements in the basic grayscale as well in the saturation. I've minimized the stars with shifting star masks, more saturation boosts of course. There I have done color noise reduction because the color noise tends to be blue in the HO image, which is which makes sense because the green channel has been replaced by the blue. The first thing I've done to this one, I have done a dynamic background extraction to get some light pollution out of the way. You can see the left hand side of this image is way more gray than this one. It's uh, This one is more dark. The star reduction of course, which has some trouble, but these stars here are more apparent because I've used an unsharp mask. And this image to the right could need some improvements, but I like it as it is. And for only 45 images, 3 minutes, it's an amazing result. And just for comparison, I will now load the first run of this image I've made, which is the basic RGB processing. Well, this is the annotated version, hang on. Where is it? Look at this difference. Of course, not in size, but in color and contrast and everything else. Look at this difference. And I will again say the image on the left is everything I could pull out out of this image. And it looks way less good because the green channel pulls everything down. There is no data in the green channel. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Let's check that. Look at this. There is nothing there. If I go now to green over here, I don't think... Look at this. This is now the new blue channel. To the left, RGB. And to the right, HOO. If you shoot from light polluted city skies, a multi narrowband filter which isolates H803 is an awesome option to shoot in one night, to shoot one shot. 
and get everything out of nebula targets. It doesn't work that well on galaxies, you really need to point the exposure time to see anything. But especially in the summer with Cygnus rising in the northern hemisphere and Cassiopeia rising with all the nebulae in there, this is such a good filter option to choose for color cameras. So let's close this one. And that's also the editing magic that Pixinsight can do. Compare these images. This is exactly the same data. It changed nothing. This is these are the same images, just editing. And not editing like photoshopping, creating fake contrast and everything. This is in there. This is the image how it looks, how I want it to look. And it looks and it's nothing fake about that. It is real and this is amazing. It still amazes me that we normal human beings can take these images of deep space from our backyard, which is insane. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have any more questions you can of course leave them in the comments down below. The new refractor is finally here, I had to fix some issues with the focus draw tube but I think everything works fine now. I will of course have a different video about this beauty over here and I haven't had a single clear night in a month but I want to check if this works well really badly and I think tonight will be a good chance hopefully. The exams are finally done and I can spend more time doing astrophotography, images and videos, finally. If you enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button to get more of these videos and maybe check out the other videos I've made on Pixinsight and everything else. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.